Well, I think all of us that have been involved in the sport for a long time and those that may be new to it will always be pleased to hear that there's a new promoter, a new club. They found a new venue, not just a field, not just one that they've just come across. It's a fantastic landmark in the middle of Kent, the Hop Farm. We've bought the riders here that have been competing in grass track, long track, and many of them even speedway. Mitch Godden has decided to contact them all, sort out a track here, and using years and years of experience of riding himself all over Europe, watching to see what other clubs do, how they put it on, we've now got this circuit here that's been put up very rapidly, and indeed the riders that have been out for practice this morning are saying really to me that it's a challenging track, it's going to be an interesting one, and most of all I think that the message I'll leave with you now is that I can't predict who's going to do the winning today because we have such a wealth of experience in that pits. But what a lot of riders are consistent with is saying to me, it's not a flat out track. It's a track that the riders are going to have to think about their riding and it's going to be somebody that's using that thinking, using their ability and their skills to get themselves up on the rostrum this afternoon. So the very first time in history, we've got racing here at the Hop Farm. We wait to see how it unfolds this afternoon. We wait to see who it is that's going to be taking the awards away for the very first time. Whatever happens, it promises to be some great, great racing. Well, of course, there's always a great deal of anticipation at this time of day, particularly when we've come to a new track for the very first time. But Matt from Roller, really from a 1,000cc sidecar position, how do you see the track at the moment? Um, very difficult to ride at the moment. Uh, I mean, if it, it may get better when the grass is off. It, it may actually get too fast. That's my only concern is that for us, the straights are quite long and the, and the turns are quite tight. Um, and you're having to go because of the bumps that are there, where the bike takes you sometimes. You can't always be, totally be in control of where you're going on the straight. Um, so it's going to be an interesting day. I think there's going to be some controversy. But it, <laughs> hey, the track's there to be ridden. I mean, we're going to have to ride it. Absolutely. It. Well, at this time of day, I mean, that's exactly the sort of thing I wanted to hear because I've been walking around this morning. It does look a little bit of a tricky track, but something a bit different never does us any harm, does it? No, no, and bring it on. I mean, that's what grass track's about. A bit of, you know, a bit of difference here and there. And, you know, I just sit there and point and go and Will has to do all the work so <laughs> the, wor the, the worse of the track the better because it makes me laugh <laughs> <laughs> absolutely well there you go Andy you got it confirmed now you're the one that does all the work yeah I mean especially on a track like today I mean it, it really is a hard work track you've got to think you've got to be really on your toes and, and watch what everyone's doing and so we're going to struggle oh yeah <laughs> we are going to struggle a little but you know I mean if he gets his head in gear I think we'll do alright but yeah it's, I mean if you want to ride smooth tracks, you go road racing, don't you? I mean, we're, we're grass trackers, it's, it's what we're about. It, yeah, it's going to be tough, but we'll give it our best and see what, what the day brings. So, Well, fantastic start, and uh, we'll watch to see what unfolds. All the best, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Well, we've spoken to one or two riders now, and we're finding out that maybe this is going to be a bit of a challenging track. But, Tim, from a solo perspective, do you see that, that it's going to be a bit of a challenge today? Yes, uh, with the quality of line-up, but uh, with the track, it is a challenging track, but it can be ridden. I mean, I've heard some people come up saying, um, oh, you can't, that's, you just can't ride in. I'm like, hang on, you can. You can ride the track. The track is rideable. Any track's rideable. we just got to have the confidence to do it. Absolutely right. I mean, what I'm hearing and looking out there at practice, I mean, they're quite long straights. It's going to be quick, but you're right, a very quality lineup, and, mm. you know, it's going to be tough to do the winning today, I think. Yes, it is going to be tough, but you can never say never, can you? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Well, I mean, we'll wait to see what unfolds as the afternoon goes on. There's a lot of tough qualifying, and as you say, a quality lineup to fight against, but mm. from practice, your experience of it? I liked it. I mean, honestly, I did like it. It is rough and bumpy, but. You can get over it. I mean, I, I managed it, but some other riders don't seem to like it. But I oh do. Fair play to Mitch. Well, I mean, look, it isn't. When people said boarded circuit, everyone was expecting Collier Street style, but yeah. not all boarded circuits, even abroad, and are not super smooth. They're like this. I mean, this is a bit like a Dutch track, apparently, but they all got to be road, haven't they? So Well, they have indeed, and that's good to hear, but of course I suppose the spanner in the works really from the solo perspective is that there's quite a few riders here that have ridden those sort of tracks before, haven't they? Yeah. And a lot of European travelling, so promises to be a good event. Tim, 
best of luck, mate. Okay, thank you very Cheers. much. Cheers. Well, I've got to say, it's absolutely excellent to catch up with you again, Jason. I think this must be the second time we've seen you out on uh, track racing this year. Yeah, well, I did say I wasn't doing any more grass tracks, so Mitch has kindly set out a motocross circuit for us. <laughs> so that's brilliant. So I'm still right. <laughs> so you've obviously been out for practice. You've experienced it. Come on, honestly, what do you make of it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually quite good because it's slowed everything down, you know. Like, it's, you've got to use your head a bit. You can't keep the throttle on into the bend, so... A sort of yeah I mean like grass track nowadays has developed into that sort of sport you know it's just like just flat out all the time like pretty much every track you go to it's not often that you come to there's only a couple of tracks in Germany that are similar to this and, you know but they haven't got the big whoop sections <laughs> obviously they're still flat yeah well I think you've you've obviously raised a couple of points I mean I'm listening to what people are saying as I've seen it today I mean it's a new club new setup and I think he has pulled in some of that experience of seeing what happens in Europe and you touched on it there are tracks like this that riders go abroad and ride yeah it does you know Mitch he said I'm putting on a show that's it and like as a friend he asked a favour would I ride and I was just like you know it's Mitch is trying to do something good you know so just because the track's not ideal we can still put on a show it doesn't you know it doesn't no, absolutely. I mean, I think you, 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 you're touching all the right notes here because, you know, he does want to put on a show. He knows what happens abroad. He's doing something similar. And, I mean, I will just touch for a very brief moment. I mean, your Speedway career at the moment still going good? Yeah, I'll, obviously I'm not scoring as many points as I like, but um, it doesn't just just the way racing goes, you know. It's just it's just another weekend out there. The grass track still as laid back as ever. You see the crowd, they're all just waltzing around the pits, talking to everyone. It's, yeah, it's just nice, really. Thanks to Carl for lending me another bike. <laughs> yeah, we'll get that one in, but yeah. no, great. I mean, I pick up on everything you say, and I think we, we are looking for a very different day today. There's a lot of races to get through, but you never know. Yeah. Using the head, we may see you up on that rostrum. And that is quite close to the river there. <laughs> We've, some of us have been having a wager. Can someone make it to the river? We don't, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Hopefully we speak to you later. Yeah, what no the best, worries. Jace. Thanks. Yeah. We've got the 500cc solo, the 500cc sidecar, the 1,000cc right-hand sidecars, and I think really for the first time I've seen this season, we've got the quads on track racing. Now, those of you that haven't seen these quads race before, I can tell you that over the years I've seen them race on ice, I've seen them race on the speedway circuit, I've seen them race on motocross, and of course on tracks like this. They are a very, very versatile machine, and believe me, on the what has now turned out to be nine quads that we've got competing this afternoon, there is a lot of racing experience. Now, I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we get into the races, but I'm sure there's one or two of you out there are thinking, well, nine competitors can't all go on the start line together. No, they can't. So what we've done is we've split the races, and the competitors in the quad competition will be riding effectively race seven and seven at A. So we've slotted another heat in there, uh, 7 and 7A, and then all the way through the program, 14 and 14A. So let's try and pick them up for you as they come round past me, and in number order we've got Richard Waters, riding number one this afternoon. Mark Ramsdale is the rider in uh, riding number two. Number three, Paul Williamson. Number four, Rob Heath. Number five, Paul Munro. Number six, Paul Pantry. I'm hoping that we've got all of them coming out. Number seven, there's Paul Marley. Number eight, that's Amanda Ramsdell. And number nine, the one we've added into the programme is Jim Penfold. The 500 solos are going to whiz past me. Number one, great to see Glenn Phillips here. Number two, Charlie Saunders. And you'll start to see what I mean about the level of competition. Number three, Thomas Cooper. 
Number four is all the way from the Channel Islands, Anthony Bugard. Number five, Matt Effrington. Number six, the very exciting Tim Nodes. Number seven, Shane Colvin. Number eight, a very experienced rider who has travelled around a lot of those continental circuits, that's Vince Kitchen. Now I'm sure a lot of you will recognise rider number nine. He is, of course, Andrew Appleton, who's doing so well out there on the continent for us. Number ten, and good to see another rider coming over from uh, the Channel Islands, Anthony Quinperol. Number 11, we don't see him on this sort of track racing very often, turning his hand 100% now to the speedway, that's Jason Bunyan. Number 13, just jumping ahead, is Adam Filmer. Number 12 is Rodney McDonald. Number 14, John Jeffries. Right at number 15, on the outside there is Steve Lee. And number 16, Martin Williams. Oh, I think that must be Daniel Berwick that's put number 17 on his right. And one or two of the riders coming around for the second time. But just going through that 500cc class, um, those that do go to grass tracks regularly will know that we have got a very strong lineup. Glenn Phillips, Charlie Saunders, Thomas Cooper, Anthony Bugard, Matt Effrington, Tim Nodes, Shane Colvin, Vince Kinchin, Andrew Appleton, Anthony Quimperol, Jason Bunyan, Rodney McDonald, Adam Filmer, John Jeffrey, Steve Lee and Martin Williams. Very, very tough to pick a winner from that lineup. And from the conversations I've been having in the pits, I can tell you that there is concerns about the track. They know that it's fast, it's long, but it's tight on the bench. So the comment most of them are waking to me is that it's going to be a thinker's track. Well, we turn over the page to class three as it's described this afternoon. This is the 1000cc right hand side cars. We can tell you riding number one is the reserve that's come in, and that is, of course, Mark Warren and Steve Henderson. <laughs> number two, the multi experienced uh, Steve Smith and uh, Carl Pugh. Number three, should have been Mark Gosser, but I understand Mark Gosser's out now. So four is Robert Wilson and uh, Terry Saunters. Number five, Ryan Partridge and Anthony Grant. Number six, Rob Bradley and Sean Simpson. Number seven, the very colourful Paul Johnson and Damien James. Number eight, had a chance to catch up with the Birmingham boys, Matt from Roller and Andy Wilson this morning. They said it promises to be an interesting one for the 1000cc sidecars. Number nine, Miles Simmons and Kevin Woodley. Good to see Kevin back in action. Number ten, Paul Whitelam and Al Elliott. A number of titles already this, uh, this season, and certainly ones to watch this afternoon. Number 11, Pete Colvin and Steve Colvin. And riding number 12 this afternoon, uh, all the way from Wales, Neil Owen and uh, Kevin Colborne. Now making up uh, our competitive lineup this afternoon, we've also got the 500cc sidecars. Now this is a sidecar class that was really first introduced over there in Germany when they restricted uh, racing down to 500cc. Most of the competitors have adopted what you would traditionally see in a 500cc solo machine as power. And most of them you might see as they come around have got laid down garden machines. Number one, Scott Francis and John Skinner. Number two, Wayne Reed and Craig Mathiasen. Number three is Gary Southgate and Laura Kerrison. Number four, Simon Baird and Mark Cairns. Number five, Tony Cook and Emily Coglin. Number six is Jojo Vanderburn. And number seven, Trevor Stewart and Darren Sargent. Number eight is, he comes around, number eight is Paul Moorcock and John Cook. 
Number nine just going past is Scott Dunn and Adam Young. Number ten is Nick Radley and Andy Colvin this afternoon. Number eleven, Dean Norton and Joe Richmond. Outfit number twelve, Mike Reed, and I can confirm that it is Mark Thorpe in the chair. So for the very, very first time in history, we start racing here at the Hop Farm. The Invicta Club have invited the Kings of Speed to compete for the honours this afternoon and our very first lineup could easily have been a European solo final. Because we start with number one, Glenn Phillips, number two, Charlie Saunders, number three, Thomas Cooper, number four, Anthony Bugard, number five, Matt Effrington, number six, Tim Nose, number seven, Shane Colvin, and number eight, Right on the outside is Vince Kinchin. Eight very strong competitors as they come to the line for the very first time. Up through the tapes and we get underway. Tim Nose has made a very good start from the middle. As he dives into that first turn, it is Tim Nose. I can see Glenn Phillips tucked in there in fourth place at the moment. It's Vince Kinchin right from that outside gate. It dives into that top turn, almost lays the machine down in the middle of the turn. He's gone very wide on the exit. Vin Kinchin has stayed with him. Now Gareth, Shane Colvin, it is up in third place at the moment. Vincent is still tucked in there in fourth, but now on the inside of Shane Colvin as they break down that bank straight for the second time. So, setting a very, very quick pace. Vin Kinchin trying to stay with him. But it's those two that come off that top turn and down past me, Glenn Phillips has now got himself up into third. He can see the two riders in front of him. Has he got time to close the gap? Oh, Tim Nose looks over his shoulder. He knows that there's somebody close. One more lap to go as they come round past me this time. And Tim Nose again goes very, very low. He keeps the machinery flying. Vince Kinchin still second to him. Glenn Phillips still in third. Charlie Saunders very, very wide into those boards coming out of that top turn. And as we look across the far side, this is your first race of the afternoon. Remember, it's qualifying points for a final at the end of the day. But the checkered flag goes for the very first time this afternoon. And Jim Nose finishes it with a very close second. Glenn Phillips finishes in third place. A battle here for fourth as they get close to the line. I think that on the line, Charlie Saunders just about have snuck that one. So the very first race of the afternoon and I think the easiest way for me to keep you up to date with your programs if I start from the very top we're in class one the 500cc solo race number one and rider number one Glenn Phillips gets six points number two Charlie Saunders scores four points Number three, Thomas Cooper, no score. Number four, Anthony Bugard, no score. Number five, Matt Effrington, one point. Number six, Tim Nodes, a cracking start to the afternoon, maximum ten points. Number seven, Shane Colvin, two points. Number eight, Vince Kinchin, eight points. The winning time was 130.30, 130.30, 61.53, they averaged. So 130.30, 61.53, you then should have had 6, 4, 0, 0, 1, 10, 2 and 8 points respectively. Now as I've given you all those points, if you want to keep your programs 100% then please do, but if you just want to enjoy the afternoon sunshine and enjoy the competitive racing, don't worry, I've got a couple of experts sitting in here in the caravan that will keep all the scores 100% for you. We'll have to let the pits know later on in the day who it is that qualifies for those finals. But one 
different thing for those of you that go to events quite often is that it's not just about qualification for the final it's about point scoring all the way through the afternoon now you'll see there is a printed note at the bottom of the class there all points carry to overall points the overall highest point scorer is the champion and if you look it also says number of boxes denotes the grid position above Solo points in the heats, they get 10, 8 respectively as you saw in uh, heat 1. Solo points in the final. Well they've done it to our start marshals again haven't they? They've sent somebody out for a late practice. Of course everybody has to have an official practice. And I've just been told that if you haven't got a programme and you want one, we have got a few spare ones just been handed back in here. So if you need a programme, we've got plenty here. And I mean by here, on the finish line, or start and finish line as it is today. So the last of the practice completed and uh, those of you that aren't familiar with the sport it's very simply that to qualify for the racing events everybody must have a minimum of two laps official practice. Occasionally as I think you've seen this afternoon riders get problems in the pits in the morning so uh, they miss their official allotted practice slot and then uh, persuade the clerk of the course to allow them out. Uh, of course what it's all about is we want every single rider out on the circuit together. Now as we turn our attention to the second heat of the afternoon's racing, we should be seeing coming to the line Andrew Appleton, Anthony Quimperl, Jason Bunyan, Rodney McDonald, Adam Filmer, John Jeffries, Steve Lee and Martin Williams. Now just looking back at that first heat, number six Tim Nose made a very good start from the middle of the gate. Vince Kitchen from the outside. Now, interesting, we've got the very experienced Martin Williams right on this outside gate. Will he uh, have sat in the pit box and watched Vince go from the outside? He'll know that it's a possibly a very good gate. Just on the inside of him, Steve Lee. And then John Jeffrey. So, last to come in line, here's number 11, Jason Bunyan. Outside gates have proved good once again. Riders breaking from the outside. I think it's John Jeffries has made the best of it. And you can see that Andrew Appleton has made a good start from the inside. He's tucked up in second place at the moment. Well, he's in second place. No, he moves through on the inside and gets himself in front as they come round that top turn for the first time. So, setting the uh, early pace, number nine, Andrew Appleton. It was indeed Steve Lee that had made the best of those starts from the outside. He's got into the early team. Now back in second, but having to fight his way for that. That looks like Jason Bunyan is coming through in the second place, taking over and see me. And Jason Bunyan chasing after Andrew up. But Andrew looking comfortable, looks over his shoulder, comes down past us, looking quick. It is Jason Bunyan in second place. Steve Lee now having a battle with John Jeffries for that third place. And John Jeffries making just the best of it as they go into that bottom turn. Beginning to sort themselves down in this second heat. And Andrew Appleton looks to have got the measure of the circuit. Into his last lap he goes. Jason Bunyan still there in second. John Jeffrey holds third. Steve Lee is there in that fourth place. Anthony Quimperol in that fifth spot. So, the second time this afternoon and completing the first two heats for the 500cc solo. See the checkered flag raised and we see it go to number nine, Andrew Appleton. Second place to him, Jason Bunyan. Third goes to John Jeffries. And fourth place goes to the very early leader, number 15, Steve Lee.
So a great start to the afternoon for rider number nine, Andrew Appleton. It means then if we go down the list under race two, your competitors read with number nine, Andrew Appleton taking maximum 10 points. Number 10, Anthony Quimperl, two points. Number 11, Jason Bunyan, eight points. Number 12, Rodney McDonald, no score. Number 13, Adam Filmer, no score. Number 14, John Jeffries, six points. Number 15, Steve Lee, four points. And number 16, Martin Williams, one point. The winning time was 131.15, 131.15. That averages 61.02. So, 131.15. So, all the pit crew of uh, Tim Nodes are looking at that. They clocked 130, but uh, too close to tell at the moment. As we turn our attention to class two in your program, we move to 500cc solos and we see how for the very first time, number one, Scott Francis and John Skinner. Number two, Wayne Reed and Craig Mathiasen. Number three, Gary Southgate and Laura Kerrison. Number four is Simon Baird and Mark Cairns. Number five, Tony Cook, a new passenger for this season, Emily Coughlin. And number six is Jojo Vandever. With his passenger, I can now tell you, is Eric Van Dyke. Looks to got machinery going again though. No such problem for Scott Francis out in front as he goes past me. Well, problem to Gary Southgate. He falls off and number two, Wayne Reed takes over. So Wayne Reed now going to try and close the gap on the early leader, Scott Francis. See the outfit of Jojo van der Ver that uh, he's pulling off into the centre green. So, no, just three outfits left as they go past me for the second time. Wayne Reed it is, they're going to try and close that gap as the early leaders stop by the Gap opening up now. Very good. Just one more lap to go for Scott Francis. A checker flag is made ready. This really has been all about Scott Francis and John Skinner. I've been ignoring the fact that Tony Cook and Emily Coughlin have got themselves up in the second. Wayne Reed and Craig Matthiasen finishing in third. So the first of the 500 sidecars, all about mechanical problems really. Gary Southgate and passenger down there looking at machinery. Jojo van der Berth took takes his machinery back to the pits. So we're using a different point scoring system for the 500cc sidecars. If you look at the column that is headed up at race three, 
You should have for number one, Scott Francis and John Skinner, five points. Number two, Wayne Reed and Craig Matthyson, three points. Number three, Gary Southgate and Laura Kerrison, no score. Number four, no score. Number five, Tony Cook and Emily Coughlin, four points. And number six, Jojo van der Verm, no score. The winning time was 141.64, averaging 54.72. So, Scott Dunn gets away. Closest to him is outfit number 12, Mike Reed and Mark Hopkins. We're down to five and it's getting close for that second place at the moment. There's really number nine in your program, Scott Dunn has got away. pleased that he's away from that action in that battle for second place. He still looks comfortable. That's really where it's all happening. Number 10, Nick Radley, certainly not out of contention. He's sitting there in fourth place at the moment. He's that for a line around the outside of Trevor Stewart going up that back straight. Trevor Stewart finds some on the top. Picks it up. Both of them diving quickly into this top turn, closing on Mike Reed and Nick Radley trying to uh, hold himself from diving into the back of everybody else. Second flag goes. Mike Reed hangs on to that second place, and all the time the battle was going on for second, third and fourth, it was number nine, Scott Dunn and Adam Young that were getting away. <laughs> So, race four in your programme. If you go down to the list of competitors, number seven, that's Trevor Stewart and Darren Sargent, score three points. There's no score for number eight in that position. I'll come back to that in a moment. Number nine, Scott Dunn and Adam Young, maximum five points. Number ten, Nick Radley and Andy Colvin, two points. Number eleven, Dean Norton and Joe Richmond, no score. Number 12, Mike Reed 
and Mark Hopkins, four points. Number eight, the reserve coming in there, Vince Kinchin and Richard Webb, they get one point. The winning time was 141.10, 141.10, an average of 55.01. Sidecars for the first time this afternoon. I mentioned in the 500 solos that we had a big, big European class in the 1000 cc sidecars. We've got the best of the best. I wouldn't want to predict who's going to do the winning this afternoon, but this would be as good as a final anywhere. There's problems on the line for Ryan Partridge, but the rest quickly sort themselves out as they go into that first turn. I think that's Rob Bradley that's got himself to the front. Rob Wilson in the second place. Steve Smith. Oh, down that bottom corner for the first time. And uh, coming off that bottom turn, it is Riley number six this afternoon. Indeed, Rob Bradley. Rob Wilson sitting there in second place. Steve Smith trying to close the gap. Mark Warren has come in, of course, in place of Colin Blackburn. He sits in fourth place at the moment. And Sean Timpson, who've already had some big results already this season. Oh, they look very much in control. Rob Wilson. Gary Saunders still there in second spot, but not closing out. Steve Smith still fighting his way in the Back to the field, Ryan Partridge has got his machinery going. Oh, I'm not sure that was anything too serious on the start line. One more map to go. Setting a cracking pace in the 1000 CC sidecar is Rob Bradley and Sean Simpson. And certainly no chance. I've still got closer to Rob Bradley. Not sure it's going to be close enough because Rob Bradley is certainly travelling as he comes off that bottom turn for the last time. And he sees the first checkered flag for 1000 CC sidecars. Rob Wilson in second, Steve Smith in third, Mark Warren in fourth. So the first of the 1,000cc sidecars this afternoon and let's go from the very top because we've not seen competing this afternoon number one Colin Blackbourne, no score goes in there. Number two Steve Smith scores three points in his first ride. Number three Mark Cossa also a non-starter, no score. Number four Rob Wilson, he finished in second place and four points. Number five Ryan Partridge got the machinery going and collects one point. Number six, Rob Bradley, maximum five points. Right down the bottom of your list, you'll find uh, the reserve Mark Warren. He rides as number one now, and he scores two points. The winning time was 139.28, 139.28, an average of 56.02. Quite simply, there has been a misprint, and Shane Colvin is a solo rider, you might have all gathered. He therefore won't be competing in 1,000cc sidecars. Number seven should have been Paul Johnson. Number eight, Matt from Roller. Number nine, Miles Simmons. And then we should have had number 10, Paul Whitelook. Number 11 is Pete Colvin. Number 12 is Neil Owen. So we should have six coming to the line.
Nick Southwick coming to the line. Still well in the last two. Paul Whiteland who's got away down that back straight and locks it into this bottom turn. Drives hard off that bottom turn. Keeps the speed on as they come over that hump coming out of that bottom turn. Neil Owen has got himself back in second place. So Paul Whiteland away down that back straight. Neil Owen let him get away. He'll be in the bends I think for Neil Owen and Kevin Colborn might be able to get the advantage. They're holding it very tight on that bottom turn. Paul Whiteland a little bit further out. Matt Crumbo is still there for that challenge in fourth place. Mark Simmons and Kevin Woodley holding fourth place at the moment. Action is going to be about those early laps as they sort themselves out. It's going to be difficult to try and keep with the front runners. They go into the last lap, this is the first time out for all of these outfits this afternoon. We'll be back into the field. Discussions because you can distinctly see that Neil is much, much quicker in the middle of the bends. Oh, the checkered flag goes for Whiteland turn off. He takes the win. Neil Owen in second. Matt from Roller in third and Miles Simmons in fourth. So, race six in your programme. It's class three, the 1,000cc sidecars. Let's go down that column because it's race six. And outfit number seven, Paul Johnson, scores one point. Number eight, Matt from Roller, scores three points. Number nine, Miles Simmons, two points. Number 10, Paul Whitelum, maximum, five points. Number 11, Pete Colvin, no score. Number 12, Neil Owen, four points. And the winning time was 138.18, 138.18, 56.65 they averaged.
And as uh, you may have heard me say earlier on this afternoon, with the lineup of quads, we've got one additional quad that's not in your programme. That's number nine, Jim Penfold. And what we've had to do, because of the numbers then that we couldn't have on the line together, we've had to change the race format. So in this, the first of the quad races, race seven, we've got competitors one, two, three, four, and five. As they get underway... I can see three from the inside gate, Paul Williamson, but I think he's dropped back into third place at the moment. He's he got himself back in front. Oh, they dive into that top corner. You can see they're very quick machines. Don't look the easiest to handle, I must admit. But as they come down past me, we've got uh, Rob Heath on the outside and Paul Williamson on the inside. But Paul Williamson with the best of it as he comes off that bottom turn and up the back straight. You can see exactly what the uh, is as they sit back on the back of the seat, trying to get maximum drive from those back wheels. And the only leader stays down in front. Is he looking down at machinery? Mark Ramsdor in that third place, closing up on those front two as it starts to change. Robbie has gone around the outside. Robbie in front as they go into that top turn. Mark Ramsdor trying that as well as he looks to go around the outside. So it is number four, Robbie, who goes into the last lap. Oh, there was all sorts of problems there. We've got one more into the tender green. And that means there's a big, big gap opened up between first and second. Second flag we raised for the first time this afternoon for the quad. And we start to see which ones we've got to watch this afternoon. It's crossing the line is number four, Rob Heath. Well, number one, Richard Waters finishes in second. Race seven, number one, Richard Waters gets four points. Number two, Mark Ramsdell, no score. Number three, Paul Williamson, two points. Number four, Rob Heath, maximum five points. Number five, Paul Munro, three points. Now, coming to the line in this one, we should have six, seven, eight, nine. We can call it 7A, but 7A is the first ride. And the competition for the quads is all about scoring points consistently. There is no big final at the end of the day. They will score points all the way through. So Steve and Trey comes to the outside. So they get underway and down to that uh, first corner for the first time. And that looks like Jim Pitfold has got himself to the front people. The rest of them now going around that first turn. Last minute, not in there, pre-printed, but number nine, Jim Penfold, is the rider that's got himself to the front and comes off that top turn. Ah, number seven for Marley. Jim has got a chase after as he goes down the back straight. Back a few years, see the quads racing quite regularly at the big speedway tracks. I know that Jim turned his hand to it some years ago. Obviously still got very competitive machinery. Steve Pantrey sitting there in third place. We've got problems for number eight, Amanda Ramsdall. Not keeping on the pace and that sounds a bit too stroke in there. We look to those front three to come towards the last lap flag this time as they come round. Jim Penfold setting the pace. He doesn't look like being caught. But there could be a change in second. The steep and Trey is trying to get around the outside of Bombali and just does it, I think, to go to that bottom turn. So a change to second place. Checkered flag being made ready. They come towards us, you can see coming off that top turn, very much in control. It is a win, first time out for Jim Penfold.
So, race 7A in your programme, but you can just continue with the points further down that seven column as we've got number six, Steve at Penny Tray, scoring four points. Number seven, Paul Marley, three points. Number eight, Amanda Ramsdale, no score. Number nine, Jim Penfold, maximum five points. The winning time was 142.45, 142.45, the average speed. So we now turn our attention back to the start of the day when we look at class one, the 500cc solo out for their second time this afternoon and the top point scorers straight away come together. We've got number six who won the very first race of the day, that is Tim Nodes. Up against number nine who won the second heat of the day, Andrew Appleton. Oh, they're joined by Glenn Phillips and Charlie Saunders, Matt Etherington, Anthony Quintrell, Adam Filmer, and John Jeffrey. Now, looking interestingly at the gate, Andrew Apperton and Glenn Phillips right on the outside here. Number six, Tim Nodes has got grid three. Andrew's made a very good start on the outside. Tim Nodes in second place to him as they get round that first turn. Tim Nodes was on the inside line, Andrew Upton was on the outside. Glenn Phillips is up in third place, he had grid eight on the line. As they come round that top bend, Andrew Upperton head down as he comes down past us. Tim Nodes has got to do the pursuing now as he goes into that bottom turn. Glenn Phillips still holding third. Watches closely where Tim Nose is going. No one Andrew's getting away. Tim at the moment has no answer to Andrew Appleton who leads him off that top turn. Looking very, very quick. Now oh, there's a bit of a battle going on for that fourth place. Charlie Saunders and John Jeffrey look to be battling it out. the excellent form of Andrew Appleton. You can see why he's uh, going well in Europe at the moment as he's got one more lap to go. There's problems with him now with the machinery as he puts his hand in the air. The rest of the riders uh, avoid him as they come round off that top turn. But disappointment early in the afternoon for Tim Nose. Andrew Appleton comes across the line to make it two out of two. Glenn Phillips gets that second place. Charlie Saunders has won that battle for third. It means that John Jeffries picks up fourth place. A disappointment as Tim Nose takes his machinery back to the pits. So, race eight in your programme. Second time out for the 500cc solo class. And we start from the very top of the list. Number one, Glenn Phillips takes eight points from that ride. Number two, Charlie Saunders, six points. Number five, Matt Etherington, no score. Number six, Tim Nose, unfortunately, no score. Number nine, Andrew Apperton, maximum ten points, making it two out of two. Number ten, Anthony Quimperl, takes two points. Number thirteen, Adam Filmer, one point. Number fourteen, John Jeffries, four points. The winning time was 128.93, 128.93, 62.54 they averaged. program we see out for the second time number three Thomas Cooper he's got an outside gate
Shane Colvin, who went well in his first ride. Number eight, Finn Pitchett. Where is he positioned himself on the gate? He's in grid three. Oh, they get underway. Daniel Berwick has come in, number 17, and he sees Daniel right up there in second place at the moment. Oh, they sort themselves out going down the back straight. Like Steve Pitchett has picked up a lot of grip coming out of that first turn. He's slotting himself into second place. But it's Jason Bunyan they're all chasing as he comes off that top turn. Jason Bunyan with Vince Kinchin chasing after him. Daniel Berwick is coming in reserve. Vince sits up in third place. Thomas Cooper in the fourth place at the moment. Still all eyes on shore on those front two as Vince Kinchin looks to be getting some excellent for coming out of that bottom turn. He dives into the top turn very, very quickly indeed. You can see exactly where Jason Bunyan's going. Oh, pass me, Bunyan, who we don't see that often on the track racing circuit. Most of his time is taken up by speedway racing. Vince Kinchin, still close to him. You can see going into that top turn, it's a much, much quicker entrance to Vince Kinchin. Jason gets the drive on coming out of that bend though and down this back straight. One more lap to go. Into the last turn they go, we've got problems on that top turn. And we've got a fallen rider. The, looking at the marshals on that top bend, the red flag displayed. So riders indeed slow down, make their way around that turn. Now, with that race being stopped, obviously, in the interest of safety, the good news for a result is concerned is that they had completed three-quarters race distance, i.e. they'd taken the last lap flag before the red flag was displayed. It means the result, as it was, can stand. It means that points-wise, we've got from the very top, number three, Thomas Cooper, with six points in race nine. Number four, Anthony Bugard, no score. We understand, in fact, he has actually pulled out of the event this afternoon due to mechanical problems. Number seven, Shane Colvin, three points. Number eight, Vince Kinchin, eight points. Number 11, Jason Bunyan, 10 points. Number 12, Rodney McDonald, one point. Number 15, Steve Lee, no score. Number 16, Martin Williams, two points. The reserve, Daniel Berwick, riding number 17, comes in and scores four points. No time and no speed, of course, because that was stopped after they completed three-quarters race distance. So, we now turn our attention once again to the 500cc sidecars, and straight away I'm pleased to see that outfit number six, Jojo Van Der Ver, has... Uh, got himself to the start line. You remember he pulled out in his first ride. And, uh, I've been asked actually if there is anybody that's possibly able to passenger Nick Radley this afternoon. Anybody that's got a license is here this afternoon. If they could make themselves known to number 10 Nick Radley. He's not got a passenger at the moment and uh, I don't know that's due to injury but um, if there is anybody that could step in at the, literally the last minute as they say um, outfit number 10, Nick Radley. Now the point situation, I can see coming to the line in grid 3 is number 1, Scott Francis. They had a win first time out. Number 9, Scott Dunn should be joining us as well. Indeed, it is Scott that comes to grid 5. Coming in the line, Tony Cook right on the inside and a second first time out. Strong field in this one. Going in this one, we've 
got five very strong competitors though. Scott Dunn made a brilliant start from the outside. Scott Francis goes with him as well as they turn into that first turn. Scott Dunn with the best on the first turn. Scott Francis holding that second place. These two, you remember, have each other in their second outing. And Scott Dunn making the best of it at the moment. With Adam Young in the chair, comes off that top turn. They both get their bodies down and get the drive on. And Scott Francis and John Skinner chase after them. Oh, we've got Tony Cook and Emily Coughlin in the middle green, I'm not sure what the problem is. That's disappointing as he had a second first time out. No such problem for Scott Dunn. Gaps are beginning to open. Got done. And Adam Young look to have got the best of this one. It's the last lap flag for them this time. They really are motoring on these 500 cc chairs. Wayne Reed is the outfit in third place, but they've lost touch with those front two. Or is that an arm in the air I can see from his passenger? Well that is very, very disappointing for Scott Francis. And Scott Dunn takes the win. I'm sure that uh, Wayne Reed won't mind as he crosses the line and gets that second place. Well, they're quickly trying to get maximum points out of this as they can. They're being caught by the Dutchman as they come to the line, but very quickly they get across the line. They just about beat the Dutch crew to the line. And that's the hardest bit of work those two have done for a while. Is the PA engineer around anywhere? The PA engineer? No. So, race 10. Race 10, the points scored for number one, Scott Francis, three points. Number two, Wayne Reed and Craig Matthiason, four points. Number five, Tony Cook, no score. Number six, Jojo van der Berf, two points. Number nine, Scott Dunn and Adam Young, at maximum, five points. Number 10, Nick Radley, no score. And the winning time was So we move to race 11, and uh, we stay with the 500 sidecars. Dean Norton and Joe Richmond first to come to the line. See most of the top points for us. Here is uh, Mike Reed, who's on the second first time out. Come round, it is Trevor Stewart, and there's a gang of lions together as Mike Reed has had a brilliant second turn and got himself up in the second place. Just in front of all our first time in the kitchen. Those two together, Mike Reed now is going to chase after. 
Trevor Seward with a good face on here comes down past me. Mike Reed and Mark Hopkins still there in second. Vince Kinchin and Richard Webb on that third place. They work away in the pits and he's going to change something. Uh, race conditions can of course change as the day goes on. Might find some little trick to up the gearing a little bit. So race 11 then, we're with the 500 sidecars and we see the competitors out for the second time. Right from the top, let's go with number three, Gary Southgate, two points scored. No score at all for Simon Baird. Um, number seven, Trevor Seward, five maximum points. No score going to outfit number eight, and that's the reserve at the bottom there. We've got number 11, Dean Norton with one point. We've got 12, Mike Reed with four points. So two seconds for Mike Reed and Mark Hopkins. Eight points they move on to. The reserve, Vince Kinchin, scores three points. The winning time was 140.70, 140.55.23. 55.23 they averaged. 140.70. That is race 11 in your program that we complete. We'll be now turning the page to move to race 12. We're back with the 1,000cc sidecars. Turn over the page, class three, thousand cc right hand side cars. And a very interesting contest as we look to race 12. We're looking back at those early heats, races five and six. We had wins for number six, Rob Bradley and uh, Sean Simpson. But also coming out in this one, outfit number 10. That's Paul Whitelam and Al Elliott. Now, Paul Whiteland will take grid six, and interestingly, we've got number six, Rob Bradley, on gate two. are in the lead as Rob Bradley desperately tries to close down on them. Steve Smith doesn't want anybody to get away from him. But we've seen Paul Whitelam in terrific form this year. And he leads going into that top bend. Steve Smith much, much closer to Rob Bradley now for that second place. Oh, Paul Whitelam through. Steve Smith's in problems. Steve Smith falls down on the first side. The rest of the outfits go by him down that back straight as we turn our attention back to the early leader. Paul Whitelam and Alan Elliott in front of uh, Rob Bradley and Sean uh, Simpson. Three outfits almost together there. Fifth place. Winning the outfit against Paul Whitelam this afternoon. 
with just one more lap to go before White doesn't make it two out of two. We look to that fast, yeah. Bradley, and of course, yeah. Bradley, and Bradley, so he's right up there among the yeah. for this afternoon. But as we see the checkered flag raise, it's going to be two out of two for number ten, Paul Whitelock. points in uh, race 12 let's go down the grid for you because we had a non-starter in uh, Colin Blackburn so no score goes in there Steve Smith unfortunately stopped in that one no score number five Ryan Partridge gets one point number six Rob Bradley four points number nine Matt from Roller two points number ten Paul Whitelum, maximum five points, and that makes it two out of two for Paul Whitelum. And uh, the reserve, Mark Warren, taking the rise of number one, he gets three points. The winning time was 136.83, 136.83, 57.44 they averaged. <laughs> I can see that Rob's passenger is up quickly and the rest of the race is being brought to a halt. Now, in the quads lineup. suspect this is because uh, we've lost one of our quads in those uh, early heats. It means they balance the heats up, they've got four and four. So, a bit of a battle on this one at the moment. Jim Pentrock going to the outside as a hand gets raised in the air and problems on the far side. So Jim Penfold quickly takes over and takes the lead off that top turn. Now, number two is Mark Ramsdor, who's in second place. Mark getting close to Jim Penfold as he got that back straight. He certainly looks very, very quick this afternoon, Jim Penfold. Sorry, didn't say that Mark Ramsey was doing enough in that second place, but he's just lost it. looking to see who that second place rider is as they come up close to me Jim Penfold looks to be oh, I'm just wanting to double check that it was Rob Heathers in that second place you remember that Rob had a win first time out Jim Penfold had a win as well 
a chance for these two to battle it out together as everybody else seems to have uh, had machinery problems and there's two riders out in the center green and Rob Heath gets closer and closer all the time but for this one, Jim Benfold does it, he gets maximum points. So race 14 in your program and not much point scoring done but some very good point scoring done by rider number 9, Jim Penfold. He takes 5 maximum points making it 2 wins out of 2. The only other rider to score there was number 4, Rob Heath. He gets 4 points, moves him on to 9 overall and we now go for what we could describe as 14A. We'll check the riders as they come round. I'm pretty sure that they've gone down to 4 in each. We've lost one of our competitors. Number seven comes to the line. Number three, number five. One. I think overall we've lost number eight, Amanda Randall. Now oh, they get underway. Paul Marley makes a very good start on the outside as they all four of them go into that first turn but it is Paul Marley off that first bend and out in front as we've got two riders locked together in second place going down the back straight down that back straight they all quickly catch up with the early leader Paul Marley oh, very very wide exit from that top turn and Paul Williamson has moved into that second place and Paul Williamson trying to go in much, much tighter into the entrances of the bend. You can see that Paul Miley takes the, a very long time speed on. Paul Marley but he really did it all in that first turn and we've got problems on that top bend for Richard Waters So they had indeed completed enough race distance, so we can give you the points scored for race 14A. And it means that uh, points to be added in are for number three, Paul Williamson, scoring four points. Number seven, Paul Miley, five points. And uh, I think probably for ease sake, because we've got no time to give you there, if I go down the whole list of riders, we've got no score for number one. No score for number two. Four points for number three, Paul Williamson. Four points for Rob Heath, number four. Three points for number five. No score for number six. Five points for number seven. And five points for number nine. No score for number eight. Now you remember the interest of the outside grid that uh, there really was some good starts from this outside gate. Matt from Roller has got that position this time. And it is uh, Matt who's got himself to the line. Last to come in line is number 12, Neil Owen, who had a second place first time out. The start this time. Oh, Rob Wilson gets himself to the bend first, but Neil Owen has come through on the inside of him as they get round that first turn. Neil Owen put himself up in front. Paul Johnson holds second. Paul Johnson very, very close to Rob Wilson as he goes into that bottom turn. But that's allowing Neil Owen to get away a little bit as he comes up the outside of this turn, finishing straight. Paul Johnson still there in third place, but very close to Rob Wilson. Oh, Matt from Roller has got himself going once again. Round to make up. And he needs to score points if he can. Oh, Neil Owen is now being uh, closed in on by uh, Rob Wilson. 
Paul Johnson still there in that third place. Nick Corbin still holding forward. But as we watch the action flying. Neil Owen still holding that lead, but Ron Wilson all the time is looking for the advantage, looking for a way through. One more lap to go. And big disappointment for Matt from Rosa. But the other three outfits, as they come towards the line now. Neil Owen it is that gets maximum points, but he adds that to his second first time out. Rob Wilson gets the second, Paul Johnson is third. So, race 13 it was, indeed, a win for outfit number 12, Neil Owen and uh, passenger Kevin Colborne. Let's go from the top then, because the column holding 13 at the top, we go down and we find uh, Mark Cosser, of course, who pulled out earlier on in the meeting, no score. Number four, Rob Wilson, four points. Number seven, Paul Johnson, three points. Number eight, Matt from Roller. Very disappointing, but he picks up two points. Number 11, Pete Colvin. No score. We saw him pull off into the centre green. And number 12, Neil Owen. Five points. The winning time was 136.24. 136.24. 57.79 the average speed. 136.24. 57.79.